It's my pleasure to be among the first people to introduce and welcome Tom Katsalaias as the president-designate of the University of Connecticut. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Let's start with the most obvious question. What, what does it mean to you to be the 16th president of the university? Well, I have to say it's, it's just starting to sink in, actually. So I've been here several times building enthusiasm for, for Connecticut and UConn, and it represents um, sort of the pinnacle of uh, my career at this point and uh, an opportunity to bring to bear everything that I've done and learned uh, throughout, throughout my life. Uh, to a really exciting place uh, that's really poised uh, to take the next step. So it's very, very exciting. As someone who just recently became immersed in the, in the University of Connecticut, what would you say are the things that have stood out to you as UConn's strengths? And what are the things that you believe we need to continue to build upon as we continue to rise among the ranks of the nation's elite public research universities? Well, obviously the strengths of any university uh, and what you build on are, are its people. And, uh, uh, the other intangible is the momentum that the university has, so putting those together. But by people, it's faculty, staff, and students, but also supportive alums, uh, a supportive legislature, and a supportive governor. And uh, these are the essential ingredients, uh, ingredients to build and, uh, and to go forward. Uh, but in addition, there are some real tangible strengths here. Uh, the state has invested an uh, extraordinary amount, of billions of dollars in capital infrastructure, uh, over the last uh, couple of decades. And uh, in terms of the competition for uh, talent, particularly recruiting new faculty, that's, that's a wonderful currency to attract uh, really wonderful colleagues to come and join us and build on the strength and, and the excellence that we have. So I, I think there's been this great investment in the university and now's the time to capitalize on that investment by bringing uh, even more people to join uh, in strategic areas. UConn has a number of wonderful relationships with community colleges around the state. Mm -hmm. You started as an undergraduate student at Santa Monica Community College before right. transferring to UCLA. Can you talk about how that helped shape the, the understanding that you right. have about the mission of public higher education and what lessons did that teach you about college? Sure. It, you know, it made me appreciate that there are many pathways to ultimate success and that we need to ensure that all students from all backgrounds and all readiness for college have access to those pathways uh, to, to ultimately achieve uh, their, their greatest potential. Let's talk a bit about Tom Katsalaias, the person. You're a California native, mm -hmm. 30 years as a lifeguard in Los Angeles County, which I'm sure folks would love to learn a little bit more about. Tell us about the things that impacted you growing up. Yeah, I kind of grew up on the beaches of Southern California. I really thrived on, you know, junior lifeguard programs that, uh, you know, developed skills and allowed camaraderie and competition. Uh, I was a swimmer in, in high school and, uh, and, and at Santa Monica College. And, uh, you know, I, I was uh, drawn to, uh, to UCLA. Uh, a university much like UConn because of its broad academic context with athletics, uh, great academics, the arts, and beyond, and uh, uh, per pursued my career there. And then um, I was headed to, to industry, actually. I ended up with a PhD in physics, and I was planning uh, to come to the East, actually, uh, to a company that uh, go unnamed. But, but uh, at the last minute, uh, a faculty member at UCLA said, we're going to do an experiment on your PhD theory, theoretical thesis. Would you stay for a year and help us support it? And uh, I found that experience to be transformative, particularly working in a team on team science as opposed to working as an individual on my PhD. And that really opened my doors to academia and, uh, and opened my eyes to academia. Being a university president, and, and obviously as a provost as well, which you're quite familiar with, are, are high-intensity, high-pressure jobs, yeah. long-hour jobs. Yeah. Yeah. What are the types of things that you like to do to recharge and unwind? Well, you've heard about a few of them, but uh, on a regular basis, I, I still like to swim, you know, a couple thousand yards uh, as often as I can. And uh, so I think you'll see me at the pool. <laughs> you once said that a calculus teacher named Mr. Crawford gave you the following advice, and I'm quoting, all happiness comes from successful effort. Do you think that's right? And how has that shaped your life? Yeah, you know, he was a wise man. And uh, he, he also pontificated on other things about, 
whether it was more important to rebound or shoot, have a high shooting percentage in basketball. He was, he was really an interesting and inspiring sort of math teacher. Uh, I think he was right that happiness comes from successful effort. I think the all part is a little bit uh, modified. Uh, there are other forms of happiness, and uh, we're, we're learning more. I'm kind of a, uh, an amateur junkie of uh, behavioral economists, and uh, we, we, we've learned from, you know, from research, but also just observation, that being able to uh, share something you've learned with others and to use it to help someone else uh, is also one of the, the purest forms of happiness. I think Socrates mentioned something similar to that as well. So I think if you, you mix the two and then you add that third dimension, which is there's a certain kind of happiness where you take a little time off and uh, you know, watch a perfect wave from under a palm tree, then I, then I think that's the full picture. <laughs> okay, so I'd like to conclude our time together today with a lightning round. Okay. Okay, very short, quick hitting questions. Okay. Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay, here we go. Book that you're reading right now. Uh, well, I just finished a Ken Follett novel, but mostly I like nonfiction. So I've been, I'm kind of in the middle of Sapiens. Best book or movie about sailing? Uh, well, let's see. Uh, best book or movie about sailing? You know, there was one with Robert Redford where he's alone at sea and there's not one word spoken throughout the entire movie. And you see this, the consequences of a cascade of, of mistakes that starts with one tiny mistake and ends up catastrophic. I, I, it's the one I, that's most memorable. I don't know what's best. <laughs> it's not a happy one. Fair enough. Favorite type of music? I, I like a variety, but um, you know, kind of a vintage rock and roll guy, 70s and 80s music. Um, um, listen to a little Greek, music, Greek folk music now and then. And, um, you know, uh, even occasional country song like What Kind of Gone. Dream vacation. Discovering new ports of call. So being on a boat with a good group of friends and going from you know, new port to new port, uh, little harbors, uh, settling into the rhythm of dropping anchor each night, going for a swim, going ashore, exploring a new, you know, a new beach and restaurant, and uh, and moving on the next day. Hidden talent. <laughs> uh, well, let's see. I can go through the things that I'm not talented at. Uh, you know, it, d don't ask me to s to sing or dance. Uh, I think that the um, <laughs> I did win a game show once when I was in college, so maybe that's an a, an unknown talent. Was it a, a yeah, fam Family Feud. Family yeah, Feud. Yeah, yeah. Okay. First thing you'd grab if your house was on fire? Uh, probably my dog Sandy and Anna Maria, but uh, uh, you know, I did have that experience. I, I lived in Malibu for a number of years, and uh, there I was at a conference, and I think it was in St. Louis, and uh, the, the Malibu fires came through, and the house. And I saw it on CNN, and I could see the you know the house burning down, and uh, the house is burning down, not my house. Uh, and then my house came into view, you know, on on TV. Uh, a lifeguard friend of mine had made his way in. He'd been my former roommate. Got in the house. He said, "Don't worry, Tom. I've got everything under control. Uh, I'm gonna." take your car and, and, uh, and get out of here. He said, what, what do you want me to take? And so really there wasn't that much that, that was that critical to me. It was really a few pictures and, uh, and, and nothing more. So, uh, so I've had that experience a little bit. It was different. Different to watch it on CNN in real time. <laughs> it, was, it was a hypothetical question, but yeah, you, yeah, you yeah. gave a very uh, real, world, okay. real world answer. Mm -hmm. The closest that we'll get to a political question mm -hmm. in Southern New England. Mm. Red Sox or Yankees? Oh, L.A. Dodgers. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, not going there. <laughs> Tom Katsalais, 16th president of the University of Connecticut. Thank you very much. Welcome. Thank We're you. glad to have you. Thank you, Tyson. It's a pleasure to be here.